I'm Dr. Benita Rattan and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. As you know, I'm a doctor but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. So today's video is answering the question, does skin of colour really require different skincare to Caucasian skin? Now, there are a few fundamental things that we need to know. What is the difference between skin of color and Caucasian skin? Number one, with, pig with uh, skin of color, we pigment quickly. So I always say one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. Unfortunately, the majority of skincare on shelves um, have not been designed with that in mind. Um, and there's a twofold problem with that. Number one, products can often be too irritating for skin of color and lead to pigmentation. And number two, a lot of these products don't don't have uh, tyrosinase inhibitors in them. Those are skin brightening ingredients, uh, which is really our number one uh, area of concern. Now, the reason that skin of color pigments so quickly is because we have larger melanocytes. Those are cells that produce the pigment melanin. It's a myth that skin of color people have more melanocytes than Caucasians. We've got the exact same number. It's just that our cells are larger and they are easier to trigger. This is why when you have an insect bite, it leaves us with a brown mark for decades. Whereas if this happened to a Caucasian, they would just, you know, they would it'd just go red and then it would go back to normal again. So this means that we're left with a map of pigmentation on our face and our body. So for example, every time you've had an acne mark, it's going to have left, um, a dark mark which can then be there for years um, and often we're more worried about the dark marks than the original acne itself um, so this is what one of the reasons why we do need to take care with our skincare so for example if you're treating acne we would want to treat the acne the red marks and the brown marks not just the acne and so we would need a completely different skincare routine for acne as a Caucasian would for example the other thing with skin of color is that we tend to get hypertrophic scarring so I remember for example after my c-section uh, I had a raised scar afterwards and so with my second c-section I made sure they injected me with uh, steroids in order to minimize the scar the second time but we are prone to hypertrophic scarring and sometimes even keloid scarring where the scar tissue has grown beyond the boundary of where it was originally cut and can continue to grow so this is another thing that we need to be aware of with skin of color compared to caucasian skin the other big concern for skin of color is melasma so melasma is hyperpigmentation that tends to start here as little freckles in our late 20s early 30s um, people mistakenly think that these are cute freckles but actually they're early signs of sun damage to the skin and they tend to, after a while, join up and then form patches. And because of cell talk, you start to get pigmentation in other areas, often the forehead and the upper lip area. So again, with skin of color, we need to be very, we need to be vigilant with our sunscreen from a young age, um, not only because of skin cancer, but also because of melasma, which is more prevalent um, in the skin of color community. On the theme of pigmentation, uh, skin of color, we also tend to get dark circles, which tends to be due to pigmentation, not volume loss. So dark circles tend to take place at a young age and they tend to be hereditary. At puberty, we also tend to get pigmentation around the mouth area, which means that sometimes you're wearing foundation and it may look ashy around this area, but matches the rest of the skin. And so that can also be a little bit frustrating, which is why we tend to color correct the mouth area. Um, if that's one of your areas of concern. The other areas tend to be the underarm area and bikini area. These areas also tend to darken um, during puberty, which doesn't tend to happen for Caucasians. With skin of color, we also tend to have less ceramides in our skin, which can lead to drier skin because of increased transepidermal water loss. So more water is evaporating from our skin because we don't have those ceramides to lock in uh, moisture into the top layer of skin. 50% of the epidermis, the top layer of skin, are ceramides. They are absolutely crucial. And this is why I love to moisturize with ceramides um, and I recommend it for skin of color. So some of the key things I say with skin of color that we do need to be careful of when it comes to pigmentation is to avoid the initial inflammation, avoid the initial assault on the skin. So for example, if you are prone to melasma, 
you want to be vigilant with your SPF 50, your wide brimmed hat and your anti-melasma sunglasses. So these are the, my Dr. V anti-melasma sunglasses. I literally made just so that I could protect my zygoma area, the cheekbone area, which is where I tend to get pigmentation. 80% of the population tend to get pigmentation first here and then it spreads to other parts of the face. If you live in the city, you must protect your skin from pollution. So a lot of the sunscreens have um, antioxidants in them too, including Melashield. So this is Melashield. It is a mineral SPF 50 broad spectrum with maximum UVA protection too. It does contain Melashield in it. Um, so this is in Singapore, so it does contain Melashield in it, which is a UV stable tyrosinase inhibitor, which is important for pigmentation and does contain antioxidants antioxidants in it too to mop up free radicals that happen when pollution hits the skin um you know this is this happens to be my one but you can use whichever uh, sunscreen you like but i always say go for mineral sunscreen because it's anti-inflammatory um, i tend to say always go for an spf 50 because that's a maximum uv b protection and i always say go for pa with four pluses because that's the maximum uva protection those three things i would say are non-negotiable. <laughs> um, in terms of antioxidants and other additives, you know, such as blue shield and uh, blue light protection, etc., these are additional benefits, but those are the basic things I look for in a sunscreen for skin of color. Now, when it comes to acne, um, I always say I would rather our children start with their oily acne skincare routine at a younger age because it's not just the acne I'm worried about. It's the PIE and the PIH. That's the red marks and the brown marks. So I would say if if at 10 years old, 11 years old, um, your child is starting to get oily skin and it's starting to break out, then really you do want them to be on niacinamide. You do want them to be on 0.5% salicylic acid. Um, I wouldn't wait until they have full-blown cystic acne because then at that point, that's when you start to get the textured skin, um, which is, you know, something that is near impossible to treat later on. Now just get a pen and paper for this bit because I want you to write down the tyrosinase inhibitors. Those are the ingredients that slow down the rate of melanin production that I like for skin of color. I don't like all of them uh, because some of them can be too aggressive um, and can lead to rebound pigmentation such as hydroquinone, which I'm not a fan of. Um, you get great results while you're on hydroquinone, but often when you come off of it, pigmentation comes back and comes back worse. Um, it can be too aggressive, the skin of color, which is why it's the one I don't tend to recommend. So here are the ones that I love. So I love Alpha RB10. So The Ordinary does a very good one at 2%. I love vitamin C because it's an antioxidant and it's a tyrosinase inhibitor. Um, I tend to go for derivatives. So I wouldn't go for ascorbic acid because the pH is quite low and can be quite irritating for skin of color. I tend to go for sodium ascorbyl phosphate, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, my favorite because it's fat soluble um, and helps to boost collagen as well, which is important at my age. <laughs> uh, the other one I love is uh, niacinamide. So Notorium does a very good one. Um, and so does Hiram actually. So I've just received this one from Hiram, which is niacinamide and maracuja, which I like too. So those two I like because they are at 5% niacinamide. So don't fall into the trap of 10% niacinamide. Um, because often it can lead to breakouts and irritation on the skin. Um, so today I will be filming a whole Hiram review for you. So if you do love him, then do make sure you check out that video too. The other tyrosinase inhibitors I love are octadecanoic acid. It is my favorite. I literally use it in all my products. So here we have the Dark Circles kit, which has been de designed for skin of color. And here is the facial pigmentation kit again. Um, these both contain 8 to 10 tyrosinase inhibitors each, um, which is not normal. The norm tends to be, you know, two, maybe three tyrosinase inhibitors, but these have been designed for very dark, stubborn pigmentation for skin of color when over-the-counter tyrosinase inhibitors aren't as effective for you. The other ingredients I love are vitamin A. So I love retinol palmitate, retinaldehyde um, and retinol. I again tend to formulate with all three in the Dr. V kits because triple A 
um, I tend to find gives very good results because you're actually targeting multiple steps of the vitamin A pathway. And if you just stay below the irritation level of each of the vitamin A's, um, then you're getting maximum benefit, but with the, with minimal irritation, which is really key here. This is what this whole channel is about, is how do you get the if, the benefit that you want without irritating your skin, damaging your skin barrier, or leading to further hyperpigmentation. Um, the other ingredient I love is tranexamic acid. Notorium does a very good one, and so does the Inky List. Um, now, these are all great ingredients. The issue is, if you are not applying your SPF 50, none of this is going to work because nothing can fight and damage caused by UVA and UVB rays. So you do need to become very good at applying your SPF 50. I do also say make sure it's NAVE safe. So all your products should be NAVE safe for skin of color. That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils, because denatured alcohol can dry the skin. And remember I said earlier that skin of color tends to have less ceramides. Um, and that's why as we age as well, it, one of the things that you tend to see is drier, coarser, duller skin. Um, the second thing is with fragrance, it is the number one cause of contact dermatitis and dermatitis is just means inflammation of the skin, which can trigger pigmentation, which I do not want. And the third thing I tend to say is avoid essential oils because it's a skin sensitizer, uh, which is exact opposite of what I want for our skin. So always look for NAF safe products. The other option, uh, if you don't if you don't have access to Inzincable, is Neutrogena uh, Sheer Zinc. The only thing with Neutrogena Sheer Zinc is that it comes out very white. So I'm just going to put a little bit on my hand just to show you. Um, so it does come out like a white paste, and it is quite difficult to rub in. Um, However, you know, for example, like if you just don't care, you know, that you have a white cast, then fine. If you're going for a run, um, I would wear it when I go for a run, for example, when I'm sweating and I really don't care what's on my face as long as it's protecting my skin, not getting it and not getting into my bloodstream. Um, that's why I tend to prefer mineral over chemical because chemical sunscreen filters go into the bloodstream, into your urine and into your breast milk. This is why we also tell pregnant uh, women to make sure they wear mineral sunscreen over chemical. And I would do the same for my children too. I put mineral sunscreen on them over chemical. Let's talk a little bit about dark circles. Now with dark circles, I would recommend you do the stretch test. If you gently stretch the skin apart and you still see pigmentation, it's a it means it's because you, your melanocytes have been triggered around the eye area and it tends to also be on the eyelid as well. If you stretch the skin apart and it's almost like the shadow goes, it tends to be volume loss. Now with pigmentation around the eye area, it tends to happen in your youth and tends to get worse as you get older and volume loss usually starts to take place from your mid thirties onwards. Um, so those, that's how you really tell the difference. In addition, with periorbital pigmentation, it tends to run in the family. So, you know, have a look at your parents, aunts and uncles. Um, it does tend to be genetic and hereditary. So the mistake I see people making is when they have periorbital pigmentation is that they tend to want to peel the skin using an acid. I would avoid doing this because the skin around the area is already very thin. And the last thing you want are fine lines. So I would avoid doing peeling the eye area. Instead, go back and use tyrosinase inhibitors we've already discussed. So the ones around the eye area I like are alpha arbutin, vitamin C, niacinamide. Um, try that for about three months. If you're not seeing a reduction, then upgrade to the dark circles kit, which has got eight to 10 tyrosinase inhibitors. It just means it's stronger. And often the problem with layering single actives is that by the time you get to third or fourth layer, they're not really penetrating into the skin. So actually what you want is a cocktail of a cocktail of tyrosinase inhibitors where they're all hitting the skin at the same time, penetrating the skin at the same time. So again, you're getting maximum efficacy. Okay, so how do we hydrate skin of color? So I want you to be using ceramides. I want you to use humectants. Those are water magnets. Things like glycerin, hyaluronic acid are excellent. Um, and I want you to use peptides, especially as we age. Um, it's one of the few things that can help stimulate collagen. Uh, I also say, I always say opt for fattier, thicker uh, creams because they tend to have more occlusives in them. 
um, and they tend to trap water in the top layer of skin more effectively than a lotion. An example, for example, would be CeraVe, which is one I think a lot of us have access to. There also seems to be this myth that skin of color doesn't need sunscreen. I really don't understand how we haven't knocked this one on the head yet. You know, your the melanin in your skin gives you an SPF factor of about 15 it's virtually nothing it's i would never recommend an spf 15 cream to you so why would you ever think that is okay to go out without spf 15 on the skin um don't forget uva leads to aging uvb leads to burning and both uv radiations lead to skin cancer it's again spf 50 is non-negotiable from a young age literally my children in the car door have their sunscreen and their moisturizer and they just do their own skincare in the car on the way to school it's just you know it's just something that i think should be a habit from a young age and make them excited about it make them have ownership over being good with their sunscreen my aim with inzinkable was to ensure that the next generation don't get melasma i don't want them to have to buy the facial pigmentation kit that would be the greatest gift to me is to make all my kits obsolete because everyone's been so good with their SPF 50 that you know everyone has the best skin of their lives and they don't get pigmentation that would just be incredible for me I would also say please do take care with professional treatments a lot of them aren't great for skin of color and I have seen pigmentation developing from a lot of professional treatments um, in particular be careful with laser I've done a whole video for you on which lasers to choose for hair removal for skin of color I would never choose laser to treat pigmentation um, take care with chemical peels as well if you want me to do a whole video on professional grade uh, chemical peels for skin of color can you write that chemical peels down below for me so I know that's something that you definitely want I've done a video for you on on how to, hydrofacials and how to modify it for skin of color because honestly the way it is right now um, is too aggressive for our skin um, so do make sure you watch that video if you want to know about about um, uh, professional facials a few additional things I just want you to remember just to, as a summary look for nave safe products um, avoid harsh ingredients or scrubs or harsh acids um, avoid bar soaps they tend to be alkali your skin is acidic and slightly acidic and it can disrupt the skin barrier uh, avoid natural deodorants um, they are loaded with fragrance uh, which does irritate the skin and leads to pigmentation I've seen quite severe pigmentation from natural deodorants on, on skin of color avoid any pulling of the skin this includes facial massage, aggressive facial massage, or using makeup wipes to pull the skin because it just prematurely ages the skin. Avoid steam as well. Uh, I've done a whole video on steam and why we do not want to do this to our face. Um, so please do watch that video. And the lastly, and the lastly, and lastly, I would say, um, can you lie on your back when you sleep? Um, again, two two reasons. One, any actives. Uh, creams that you put on your skin I don't want it coming off on your pillow and number two when you scrunch your face into your pillow it does lead to lines earlier because your skin isn't bouncing back as quickly I'm 37 years old now and I know a decade ago my skin I could be you know more relaxed with my skin and it would bounce back and now it doesn't so um it's just a word of warning don't forget i'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video so please do hit that notification bell don't forget to download your free guide for skin of color the link is down below um and please do follow me on instagram at the hyperpigmentation clinic and skincare for dr v and on tiktok which is dr Mita ratan thank you very much